When Maria Carlos sang her first aria at the Scala, people could not stop crying. When Pablo Picasso founded Cubism, he again made the establishment upset. When Rudolf Nureyev entered the stage, people could not help stop breathing. When Leonardo da Vinci emphasized the background in a picture for the first time, he destroyed a very common paradigm. Man was no longer the center of the universe. As a result, the intelligence of his time was filled with indignation. What do all these masters of their arts have in common? Through their painting, singing and dancing, even through speech like Shakespeare or Goethe, they all dwelt on our feelings. But how did they achieve this? No doubt that all these masters devoted their lives to their specific arts. One might say that after some years of dedicating everything to it, they became the art himself. It seems that when someone is aware of himself while practicing his specific art, what is left is pure emotion, pure feeling. And the master of such an art is able to transport that feeling to the listener, viewer or practitioner. The first time I saw Soke Nakamura was in Vienna, 1992. He made a seminar there and when I saw him the first time, you know, a small figure like Yoda is entering the room, I was very thrilled. I did not pay much effort to understand the system. I just wanted to train and I wanted to sweat and it was a lot of fun. The source of emotion lies within the human body. Where is one of the mysteries to solve? So, how did these masters get access to this source? Their old writings of Chinese research to the very center of human existence. Nowadays, this is often misunderstood as Chinese philosophy. True is, everything started with the search for eternal life. When Tai Chi and Qigong were founded, their very goal was to live a longer and healthier life. The whole system of Chinese medicine, in conjunction with its thinking, only served this one goal. No wonder, though, that after more than 2,000 years of research, the Chinese finally succeeded. They called it Gong Fa, which misspelled gained international fame. Nowadays, the people call it Kung Fu. Gong Fa and its source consists of five different disciplines. First, reading the masters of mind. Some like Lao Tzu, Kung Tzu and later Confucius. The Western mind might call that philosophy. Second, Wu Shu, where jumping, kicking and striking was taught. The Western mind might call that martial art. Third, Qigong, to gain a strong, resistant and flexible body. The Western mind might call that workout. Fourth, Tai Chi, which taught the use of the very undeniable source of human life, breathing. The Western mind might call that meditation. At last, medicine, which brought the knowledge and the feeling of the first four disciplines together. Western mind gave that many different names. The Chinese accumulated their search in that system. The source of mastership was found, and nevertheless it can be described in only one word. Feeling. Awareness, which was the goal to achieve. 
I saw a movie, I think it was in 1996, of Saint Severian Mace opening dojo. Soke was there the first time, and he made it a sword cutter. Uh, usually, when a dojo is open, a sword cutter is made like a ritual to uh, defend against bad ghosts. And when Soke made this cutter before he started, he made, in my consideration, the perfect bow. And when I saw this the first time, I realized there must be something more because his dignity, strength, and silence really, really touched my heart. The Chinese were one of the first to explore with ships. So it was just a question of time for them to first land at the shores of at that time unknown soil. Today this country is known for its economy, art and food. But most of all it is famous for its warriors. They are called the Samurai and the country is called Japan. Japan and China share a very turbulent history but it cannot be denied that one specific knowledge was transferred. Today, Japan is famous for absorbing old ideas and transforming them to their special need, just like they did with this specific art. Japan went to war for more than 600 years and within this horrible, dangerous times, the samurai sharpened their minds, their bodies and their spirits the outcome would survive through time. It is called Bujutsu, the ancient Japanese martial arts. Bu means warfare, lands, and this kanji always has to do with warfare. What is more interesting is the kanji of Jutsu. As everybody is aware of, Japanese people are singing in pictures, and due to their writing, if they want to give a person a name, for example, they search the dictionaries to find the right pictogram, the right kanji. So, in their minds, they are thinking in pictures, and these pictures should describe the person as best as possible. So, Chutsu itself means ability or art, but the small part Chu also means soft, gentle. And as Soke points out in his book, Buchutsu usually can also be translated as to stop the lands. And then he immediately asks in his book, who is stopping the lands? Is it the opponent who is stopping the lands? Or is it me who is stopping the lands? Or, and this is the third possibility, and we're coming close to Zen now, do I make the opponent stopping the lands? It was in 1950 when the young Nakamura found his destiny. Aged 18 at that time he had no idea which burden he would take one day. Destiny was hidden in the forests at Mount Yagura in Japan. An ancient place which nearly nobody knew. It was said that Master Oba resided there, Soke, of one of the oldest martial arts in Japan's history handed over for more than 800 years. Young Nakamura searched the area and finally found the place by himself. But young Nakamura, who at that moment had no idea what Bujutsu was all about, had to face another inconvenience before he could start to learn this oldest existing martial art. Tradition, one main asset of ancient martial arts, demanded a test. Young Nakamura had to sit down for half a year to watch the classes taught by Soke of Takeda Ryu, Oba Ichiyo. No talking, no asking, just watching was allowed. Young Nakamura had no idea what for, but he should learn very quickly. It was after that six months that Master Oba asked Nakamura to join the tatami with him. Nakamura was ordered to attack the master. In Nakamura's own words, I did not know how, but I was shattered to the ground so fast. 
After that incident, he had to sit down and watch again. For another half a year. But his heart was on fire, this lesson he had learned. In Japanese it is called mitori, to catch with the eyes. Mitori, mi means eye and tori means catch. So mitori means to catch with the eyes. And as Soke always emphasizes, it's more important to, to watch instead of thinking how a technique works. Uh, my master once told me the same thing in Japanese, it's called Enzan no Metsuke. Zan no Metsuke means you see a mountain. But the deeper meaning is when you are close to a mountain, you, you're very close to the basic of the mountain, then the mountain looks really huge. You stay, you look up and you don't see the, the end of the mountain. But as far back you go, as smaller the mountain becomes and as more you see the surrounding. And this way from see standing in front of the wall and then going back to see the mountain, this also describes the way how you shall train your Pujutsu. And Soke says to catch with the eye is the first step into the real old ancient arts. Uh, therefore, there's not a lot of explanation when Soke is teaching. Soke was taught the old way. So, when he is teaching, he shows one, two times, and you, as a student, has to have to put emphasis on your eyes and not on your brain. You know, but unfortunately, we always have this small person in our ear who says, "I already know, I already know." But unfortunately, we don't because when we think we know, we are not watching. When young Nakamura finally was allowed to join the school of Takeda Ryu, his aunt had to pay half a year's income and the bondsman had to sign a contract that this art will never be allowed to be taught to outsiders. Nakamura signed this contract too, with blood, common at that time. Soke Oba Ichiu was the last Soke of a heritage line of over 40 generations who taught and thought in the old traditional way. It is this traditional way, combined with the heritage of 40 generations, which makes the difference between martial art and so-called martial sports. The goal of this arts had been warfare. In order to resist the fear and to keep a clear mind in peculiar situations, Zen was put in as a discipline for Bujutsu. Long time ago it was very common to be a Zen disciple as well as a Bujutsu Deshi. Soke Nakamura, today's headmaster of Takeda Ryu, learned it the old way, the traditional way. When his master entered the dojo it was not clear what would be taught, it was not clear what he would emphasize on and it was never clear what the intention of his teaching was. For us in the West, this kind of teaching seems to be impossible. Soke once told me, when he was Uchideshi at Obaichiyo Stojo, who was the former Soke, uh, the training usually went like this. There was the students, which were only about six or eight students, were sitting in a dojo waiting for the master. He came, he took one student, shattered him to the ground, shot one technique and then left again. And he said, when I come back in this and this and this minutes or hours, I want you to be able to do this technique. So, the Koryu Vaza itself means battlefield techniques and Obaichiyo just showed the battlefield techniques, nothing else. And the student had to find out by himself what is the key point of this technique, what is the major goal of my master, that I reach in this technique, all this stuff had to be found out by himself. I consider this really, really hard. I don't think that Western minds or Western teaching could stand this kind of training, actually. The Uchi Deshi, the internal student, had to find out everything by himself. Simply by watching the master step, movements and gestures by copying them 
a transfer of experience was granted. Well, that's the whole concept, isn't it? When the Chinese started to invent their arts like Qigong, Tai Chi, Wushu, all that thing, they tried to find a way how to transfer experience. So through the first part of Mitoi, uh, stopping thinking, just watching, you get the ability to feel. And the master's goal is through special exercises, he brings you close to a certain experience of feeling. The master shall not tell you which experience you have to make, he just brings you as close as possible so that you just have to make this the last step, the small, very small step to get this experience, these feelings. And that's the key point. So Asian martial arts, especially Japanese martial arts, try to, to through their exercises to give you feelings. Feelings of your body, feelings of your emotions, just feelings. Easy, isn't it? <laughs> After Oba Ishii's death, young Nakamura became the 43rd headmaster of Takeda Ryu. At that time, all martial arts had to be registered, an outcome of the American occupation. So Nakamura registered his school under the name Takeda Ryu Nakamura Ha and as such saved it for the next generations so that this school will not be lost. When Soka Nakamura opened his first dojo, he had almost no students. He taught and trained like he learned it from his master. Nearly no explanations, powerful movements, hard training. Only a handful of students were aware of this treasure training. But Nakamura already committed himself to Takeda Ryu, as he promised his master so long ago. Only a few students could not make him a living, because to pay a half a year's income for teaching was not appropriate at that time anymore. Apart from these very few students, of which only three are still in the school today, nobody else seemed to be interested in that ancient art. It was Sofue Sensei, Nakamura's first student, who by himself was already a high-ranking karate practitioner, who told Soke that the old system of teaching does not work anymore. People cannot endure that pain, because martial art is not their main profession anymore. Soka Nakamura was very sad. He saw a treasure to be lost through, in his own words, lack of discipline and faith. It may sound strange, but through strict orders, strictly following his master's way, Nakamura gained the biggest treasure human can achieve, ultimate freedom. The goal to achieve both in Zen and in Takeda Ryu. Nakamura knew that the way he was taught was the product of more than 800 years of search. The way of his teaching led to this state of mind which he experienced from his master, but nobody seemed to be interested. This led Soka Nakamura to his masterpiece. He sat down and together with Sofue Sensei they created a new teaching method without losing the traditional way so that the outcome of the training stayed the same like hundreds of years ago. Imagine, there is this small guy, looking like Master Yoda, just learned Koryu for about 10 years, and then trained and trained very hard, and then after two decades he found out this training isn't valid for these times anymore, and so he invented a new system. And this new system he invented consisted of the three different major goals to reach. And through these goals he rebuilt the school. So what he did, he, he first had only the Koryu and out of the Koryu he made the way back to today's called Kihon Waza Basic, Henka Waza and then to the Koryu. I mean, how much you must understand to be able to go the way back? We consider mastership to go the way forward, to be a master. But then to go the way back, 
to think as a beginner, I think this is incredible, and this is what I consider Soka's masterpiece. I never met someone else who was able to to do this. And when you see Soke, when you see Soke moving, or when you see Soke fighting or or cutting with the sword, you get a pretty deep inspiration of how you should train. Plato's cave allegory was one of the earliest pieces in Western thinking which asked, what do we really see? When we watch, do we see what is happening or do we just think what we see? This always remains the main question, the source of any traditional Asian school, no matter if it is martial arts, meditation or philosophy. Do we see the truth? Western minds say everybody has its own truth. Well, this is what blind minds would say. After thousands of years of searching, the Chinese found out that the key to see is to fully be aware of the source, the precondition for seeing, the human body. Body awareness, therefore, was the major goal. This is very obvious in yoga, but not so much in Japanese martial arts. But Soka Nakamura, in his geniality, realized it very soon when he learned from Oba. He felt the necessity very early and did therefore not lose time in focusing too much on the techniques as on feeling the effects of them in his own body. Soka Nakamura's masterpiece was to split up the school in different sections. Each section shall teach a specific set of feeling patterns, which at the end put together give a main frame of awareness, which is the same as a Zen monk, a yoga student or any practitioner of the old arts would have after years of training. This all may sound very spiritual, but it is not. The first group of movements is called Kihon Vasa, which means basis. It is the most important one because a sense and need for search shall arouse in the student's mind. Basic feeling shall be explored, such as how to make steps, how to fall, how to hold a sword and how to hold a stick. This sounds very simple, but like Plato and Dogen Senji mentioned, it is not. Well, the first group Soke Nakamura invented was the Kihon. Kihon means basis. It's like the fundament of a house, you know, when you build a house, you must pull out the earth, then you put the cellar in, and then you pull out the basic stands. And this means Kihon. Kihon uh, teaches you how to walk, postures, gestures, falling, and basic techniques, which are 18 techniques. But the most important thing is when you train the Kihon Vaza as Soka is teaching them, then you get a special amount of feeling. The first feeling you shall get is the feeling of your body. I have a lot of students who might say, this is the right leg, move your right leg, and 50% of them moves the left leg. And then it's funny for both of us. But actually this is what it's all about. Kihon Vaza is get the basic feeling of your body. Don't think too much about the technique. The technique is the vehicle to bring you experience in feeling and experience in body. So, this is the first time you spend in training. I would say it's about five to ten years. The second group is called Henka Vasa, which means variation. According to Sensei Schwenk, very few people ever understood this concept, which is vital for the next step. The student should ask one question. Where does the variation lie in? It is the attack. The first time now in training, after several years, we face an opponent, who does not only attack us, but also tries to resist in case the technique is not done correctly. Less people are aware of the totality of this step forward. According to Plato, we now have to come out of the cave and put our knowledge on a stand. 
we have to find out that there is another person. Someone we, at the moment, cannot control. Henka then means variation. This is the second step Sokin invented. As in Kihon, you're always focused on yourself, on your body, on your mind. Henka, literally translated, means variation. And less people ask, what is the variation? The variation is the attack. So suddenly you have someone in front of you who is attacking you and he has to resist and he has to put strength in his attack so that you now can try if your technique works. So you spent now about 5-10 years doing this technique and now there comes an attack and now you can prove yourself did you understand it, did you learn it and this is really, really, really hard for many of the students because you quite had some years of training and you cannot be 100% sure that your technique is working. But the other thing is, now we enter the field of, of randori, of competition, and we enter the field of trying to feel the opponent. So the first time you feel yourself, the second part, Inka, you start to feel the opponent. So, again, this is great masterpiece of Soke. He split it up. He said, first, cons uh, first put the focus on you, and in Henka, put the focus on the opponent. It's quite amazing, actually. So, what is the conclusion here? Our body awareness and feeling should have a level at which we can trust it. Because focusing on the opponent binds so much energy, which would not be available if the student still has to focus too much on himself. To take the other one into account changes the whole way of making, achieving and learning techniques as of now. Also breathing comes into place now, because randori have to be done. Free combat which also strengthens the body and the mind to their limits. Randori is another part of our school which you have to uh, experience. Randori lies between Kihon and Henka. So, and is going with Henka, Vaza, and it's the competition. And many people consider the competition as the final goal, but actually it is not. Uh, it's just another way of experience, as we now have an opponent, now we have free attack, everybody can do what he wants and he shall try to make techniques happen. But there's another thing which is very important and which is not, out of my opinion, emphasized enough today. About two, three thousand years ago, the Chinese were searching for a way of exercise which does not weaken the lungs. They found out that if your lung is weakened, your mind starts to flow away. I mean, everybody has this experience when he is exhausted of training, no matter if it's martial art or it's bicycle, or anything else, and you are like, <sighs> then your mind is not focused anymore on what you're doing. And so they invented the system of uh, Kung Fu, where they had the, the Tai Chi, Qigong, Wushu, and in this training, they searched for possibilities that you can move fast for a long time without weakening the lungs too much. Imagine you are a samurai and you are on the battlefield, you, you don't have to fight only for 10 minutes, you have to fight for 1, 2, 3 hours. And if you lose all your energy on the first opponent, well, I guess this was then your last fight, right? Soka invented this randori as a necessity to go deeper in body awareness and to raise another question in the student's mind. After training basic movements, techniques and feeling, after getting trust to your own feeling, after understanding the principle of the techniques, only one question is the outcome of the following years of combat training. After the student tried everything possible 
with his knowledge. The last question is, how do I apply a technique? Simple as that. Because students tend to use too much force to break the resistance, they lose control over their breathing and therefore get completely exhausted, which on battlefield would cause immediate death. A high percentage of students now stay at this level for the rest of their careers, because it is very hard to chew that after such a long time of training, you still cannot rely on your skills to 100%. Unfortunately, it is exactly this thinking which makes the next step impossible. Again, too much focus is put on the technique instead of putting it on the feeling. Too much ego, Suke Makamura would say. But some do achieve the next level, letting their ego behind having no problem to lose a fight because they understand that a higher goal is to be achieved. Final step. The choreo vaza, the battlefield techniques. These are the techniques which the young Nakamura learned. Battlefield techniques only. Some might think that learning without all dimensioned pre-steps would be much faster, but it was Soke Nakamura himself who realized that the exact opposite is true. One must keep in mind that of such complex movements like in the choreo vasa, each small step, touch, breathing and so forth, had to be found out by the student himself. Former Soke Oba never picked out a specific movement and gave it priority. Therefore, Nakamura and the others had to find out everything by themselves. Trial and error was the only way. Very understandable that this would take much longer. And then Soke made the Koryu. The Koryu Soke invented is not the same Koryu as he learned from Obaichi. Koryo now is considered as the action on the battlefield. So now we have strength in our body, we have strength in our lungs, we don't lose too much energy, we can now focus on an opponent, we even can feel sometimes the opponent, and now there comes the reality. So Koryo is the closest part to reality. The opponent has to hit with full strength, he has to really try to reach you, and you have to make your technique works. And in this specific stage, which is about after 15 to 20 years of training, uh, there's only one question left. I have it the same. The question is, how do I make this technique work? So, uh, you, you try to find out against strength, against someone who knows the technique because you're training together, how do you play your technique? into working. So what is it that awaits the student who finally reached this level? It is the answer to the most important question. How do I apply the technique without using too much force, which would make me tired and lose my fight again? When a samurai stood in battle, he had to face numerous opponents. To lose energy on the very first one of them would get him killed. The Koryu offers the answer. It is now the first time that not only techniques but also state of mind are put to a test. The final test. Each attack has to be done with the intention to really hit. Resistance has to be applied as learned before. The opponent also has the knowledge of all weak points in techniques. A knowledge he himself gained from numerous randori and trainings. But still the technique has to work. How to do that? 
the final step offers a new set of information, often lost through centuries. In Japanese it is called Heiyo, in English strategy. After having the necessary body feeling and experience in combat, only one question remains. Strategy. Strategy is the last key. And here now we are entering the level of Okuden. Oku means a verbal, then means, means transfer. So this transfer only is a verbal from master to master, from Oshian to Shian anymore. And now there comes the jewelry of the school, which is strategy. You find out uh, after decades of training that only strategy can help you to succeed with your technique. You have now all the knowledge of feeling and you all have the, the body gesture, you have all everything, but the last key is the strategy. And the strategy is, in my opinion, that what makes an ancient martial art an ancient martial art. You know? And this is also explains why we leave the field of randori. In randori, you found your own strategies. You, in your mind, you got the feeling I must find out something, and you went the path of finding. Okay, when I make a feint here, he he is open there or something like this. And then, so you are prepared. And now the last field is strategy. Well, this is rarely, rarely taught to outsiders. Because you can only start to teach this after this long time of training. My master once told me I can tell a student this after two years, but he simply will not understand. So it's not actually a secret. It's just one thing at the right time. And the last thing you learn is strategy. I want an example. Well, I think the best example is the Patogiri. Uh, which is the cutting with the real sword. You know, you have this bamboo mat and you cut it. In the Western thinking, in, in the Western way, the Batugiri went in a completely wrong way. In our school, Batugiri is considered koyu. So we are on the battlefield and we are testing the cut. And actually, to cut a mat is mm, not very difficult. I can teach you that in five minutes. But that's not the point. The point of uh, Batogiri is that you transfer the experience of strategy which you learn in Kenshutsu through the real, real battlefield. So when you are training with wooden swords, you hit the other one, he hits you, you make the blocks, all that stuff. And during the strategy training you must gain a specific speed. Yeah? And after you gain that speed, you must reach a specific uh, ability to aim. Because you have only certain spots on the samurai with his armor where to, to cut. So he was, you know, he, he, everybody knows the samurai. He has his protection gear and you cannot cut here because there's bamboo. You cannot cut the head from this direction because there's leather, bamboo and even metal. So you have to, to gain a specific ability of aiming the right spot and cutting. And there is this video from the Hiroshima Sensei, for example, where they made a movie for Soke. And Soke uh, is telling the Hiroshima Sensei is making Sandang Yi. Sandang is a three level cut. And when you watch the cut, it really looks nice. But wait, what happens after the cut? Sandang Yi, Hiroshima Sensei. So you see, even all the teachers around him started to laugh because it was not a clear cut. He missed the second goal, he missed the second 
aim, you know. And in Western thinking, I see many many people just cutting somewhere on the on the uh, map without even moving, you know. Then there are these people who are cutting with one hand 10, 12 times the same maki. Uh, there is no strategy behind because it doesn't take the opponent into consideration. I mean, you are on the battlefield to somewhere I meet, what do you think? One is just staying there without moving and you can cut. No, this is a moving action, you change the places. And this is how it's all about. When during moving your own body, you have to cut the right spot in the right speed at the right moment. So this is what is the difficult part in cutting. And this is the difficult part in strategy itself. With strategy, we enter the field of Okuden, the secret level. These are the crown jewels of Takeda Ryu. The outstanding fact of the strategy is that it includes body feeling. This means that reaction on specific feelings someone has are futile. It is therefore not a mental brain controlled acting. It is not a calculation like, when the opponent does this, I do that. This can never succeed. When you are experienced enough, you get a set of body feeling and awareness upon which the master has to act. This is the one goal. This is what Takeda Ryu is all about. So the masterpiece of Soke Nakamura was to split up the system to save us time. He calls it a shortcut. Now you can imagine what geniality someone must own to be able to do so. To split up a system older than 800 years, to offer a shortcut and still not lose the main points of goals to achieve. Only someone who completely understood, went through and felt the system can be able to do this step. The same like Maria Callas, Nureyev, Picasso, Da Vinci, Goethe or Shakespeare achieved. In Japan they say they digested their art completely. Therefore they all had the strength to change the art of their time to enrich the art, to make it survive the next centuries. The word teacher includes the word student. There can't be a teacher without a student. And of course there can't be a student without a teacher. So the hierarchy is the same. We are staying on the same level. And I always get this feeling when I'm in Japan training with my masters or even with Soke. Soke once told me, a teacher never has to be better than a student. So when you teach someone, be at his level. Otherwise he will not learn and otherwise he will leave you because he thinks I can never reach this point. And when Soke told me that, I went into deep thinking because I realized that the Western way of thinking doesn't fit this concept. In the Western way of thinking, a teacher always is above you and looking down to you and puts pressure on you. And this is what is called motivation in, in the Western thinking. And it might work, but when it's not working, then you have an opponent who is against you. And this, on the other hand, does not fit with them. So, I like this idea and I like to live after that, that my, that my students are equal than me. But why should we walk such a long and hard path when the outcome, warfare, is not needed anymore? Zen says, when you walk, you should stop to smell the flowers. This means that during a path, even if you do not reach the intended goal, 
the experiences enrich your life to its most. Everywhere. Always. And this is the real meaning of the journey is the reward. Thank you very much for coming.